This is E2902, Spring 2014, Week 3. Uh, this covers both lectures 1 and 2. So I'm going to have a 20-minute video total for the two lectures. Because if you look at the syllabus online, uh, basically we talk about counters and registers over two lectures. But something very important before we get started, just go through Section 713 in your book in the sense that it's got a lot of VHDL examples. And like I keep repeating in lecture, do not blindly Google search and copy VHDL designs online. Most of them are wrong. Uh, they synthesize, they're either syntactically incorrect or they synthesize latches, which are not deterministic and lead to asynchronous logic, which is not, the, uh, which is not, uh, which is beyond the goals of this course. But anyway, just go through section 730 in your book. If you want, bottom line is if you want good VHDL reference designs, it's in your book. I mean, that's why you pay money sometimes exorbitant amounts and get a book and your book is very good. Yeah. All right, so today uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover counters and registers. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cover a uh, one hertz counter. So if you go under the 2902 tab on the digital systems website, download this reference design and I've already done that. And here it is, one hertz counter on my 2902 folder. So I have quarters open so let's open it up. And from now on, we are going to switch to behavioral description of all of our designs. So let's look at the counter. So here it is, okay. Uh, so what I've done is, I've, again, the project has been created. Let me, uh, oops, oh, I just opened the file. Okay, let me open the project itself. I don't know why I just opened the file there. Yeah, there you go. It just gave me a message saying that the design online is from an older version of Cordis, but that's okay. All right. So here is the project itself. Let's uh, build this guy. And while it's building, let's look at uh, the design. So everything is standard. Now we're going to start using the 50 megahertz clock uh, primarily. And like I told you in lecture, there are two different clock frequencies on the board. The 50 megahertz clock and also there's a 27 megahertz clock, which is right here, and a 24 megahertz, I forgot about the 24 megahertz. These are standard logic vectors, two bits, 27 megahertz and 24 megahertz. Uh, so we're gonna use the 50 megahertz clock for this design. And if you look at the behavioral, so this is what I mean by behavioral description. So what I've done is, so I'm basically, designing what is called as a clock divider. That's what this is called. So let me comment this. Reference design, okay. Clock divider, okay. So step down 50 megahertz to one hertz. So what I've done is I have, I basically have an integer variable, okay. So every half clock period right here, I flip a bit and that's obviously the frequency of that is going of that s signal the one hertz signal is going to be well, the frequency of the clock one hertz signal is going to be one hertz okay so like we discussed or like as you've seen in lab it's pretty standard that is the process statement is used to uh, when specified properly results in synchronous logic so how what do you mean by specified properly so basically I have the way the process statement works is you have the process followed by the sensitivity list. So the functionality of the process statement is whenever the signals in the sensitivity list change, the process statement is executed. So whenever clock 50 megahertz, clock underscore 50 and key zero changes, the process statement is executed. Key zero is asynchronous reset. It's active low. So it's asynchronous because it's outside this rising edge of clock underscore 50 uh, VHDL statement and using an if is uh, using ifs is how I in how I how, how we force sequential execution within the process now a couple of points okay I have deliberately left the one hertz counter design at the top level so point number one is it'll be good for you to make this a sub module uh, number one number two like I said please go through section 713 in your book because there are many ways to specify 
the same thing. For example, this is what I mean. I could also say if clock underscore 50 event and clock underscore 50 equals one, then this so that's also how you specify rising edge. I obviously cannot go through every detail of VHTL. That's not the point of this course. Also, the point of this course is to learn sequential logic design. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. I noticed something else that, again, you're not writing code. You're designing hardware. So if you look at this, right, inside here, how it's how you should interpret this is there are, here is the counter, okay, and here is the register. So let's check that. This is if we go into the RTL view, okay. So I've made some changes and it's asking me to incorporate the changes. Ah, so here it is. So here is the register. So I'm sorry. Here is the counter. Okay, and you see this register here, the clock one hertz. So you should be able to visualize the hardware that is being synthesized. So the clock one hertz register is right here. Okay, so let me open this up again. So here is the clock one hertz register corresponding to this if block, and the counter along with um, the fact that I put both the if statements within this rising edge results in D flip-flops, okay, for both these ifs. Now, that leads to a very important point. One of the most common mistakes people try to do is have an else block here. This will not work since you are, or since we are not writing code, okay. The synthesizer infers a D flip-flop or from now on, we'll also use the word register to refer to D flip-flops. It could be an n-bit register. From the context, it will be clear what's the size of the register we're talking about. But the bottom line is, I'll interchangeably, or we'll interchangeably use the words D flip-flop and register. But anyway, uh, infers the D flip-flop. So if you, or if we try to have an else, there is no hardware that can be inferred and the error we get is cannot implement registers on this clock edge or something like that. So again, please try to visualize the hardware you're or we are synthesizing. Okay. And you can see again the behavioral description right, right here. So if count is some integer value I uh, use 49 times, so 49999 because we started zero, total of 50 times into the sixth count values. Okay, so when I hit this, I set it to zero, else I increment it. So here is a very simple behavioral description of the counter. Okay, so again, what you should do is you should go through the model some simulation for this, download this design onto the board. Uh, that's points one and two, respectively. Point number zero is make this into a subcomponent. So work on a lot of reference designs or work on a lot of VHDL designs so this becomes second nature to you. So let's look at registers. Okay, so I'm going to, in the interest of time, I'm going to modify this design in the sense, uh, let's, so like we discussed, a register implies default fob, implies memory. So let's try, uh, let's go to insert template. So let's try the Altera primitives first. So here's registers and latches. Okay, so that's the primitive. Now here's buffer. Uh, no, try state. Da, 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 let's see. Synthesis attributes. I'm trying to get into the, uh, let's see, logic registers. There you go. Base to register. Um, constructs. Full design shift registers. That's what I was looking for. So let's start with the shift register. So let's look at this template. Okay. So what I'm going to do, let me close this. Actually, let me create a new file. I should have just created a new file and inserted it there. But Copy this. Okay. 
So what we use is again, I am probably not going to specify a shift register this way. Okay. Although you could, there are examples in your book. So let me show it to you this way, and then I'll show another example of an n bit left to right shift register. Okay. So Basically, we have 256 stages in your shift in our shift register, so it's 256 bits. So a shift register, like the name implies, shifts data. Uh, it could be a serial in, so you can get serial data in, and then you could shift. Uh, it could be parallel out, so you shift the. Let's say you have an 8-bit serial to parallel shift register. So once you get 8 bits in, your eight data lines on the output will have. Um, the 8 bit input data, and you could assert, for example, a ready signal. So, in this case, what they do is we have a 256 bit shift register, input clock, you have an enable in, and then have shifted data in, shifted data out. So, these are both one bit wide, but what's interesting is internally, you store this in this type called uh, array, okay? So you have 256 bits, which are specified by SR length, that's the type, okay? And then here is the shift register signal. So basically SR is 256 bits wide, that's what I'm trying to get at. And then here is a synchronous declaration, so if it's enabled, then here it is. This is the crux of the shift register you can see that data, so here. So let's say, let's use num stages. Uh, well, you can just leave num stages as 256. Implies that SR of 255 down to one becomes assigned to SR of 254 down to zero. So you can see how everything but the least significant bit is assigned by shifting the least significant bit up to the most significant bit to the left by one bit. Okay, that's obvious. So the question is what happens to the least significant bit? So here it is. Okay, so the, this is how you get the input data shifted in. So, and let me write this. Down also, so input data is shifted. So let me put this under here. In shifted into the LSB, the significant bit. This implies we have a left to actually let's see right to left, so you have, because you're taking the least significant bit up to 254 and then shifting it to the left, so you have right to left shift register, okay, and then this is what is called, we are tapping tapping data, that's what the term is, of the most significant bit, okay? Note that um, shifting left, we are shifting right to left, is equivalent to shifting left by n bits is equivalent to multiplying by two to the n. This is interesting. Uh, consequently, analogously, 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 uh, analogy, okay, analogously, shifting right by n bits is equivalent to dividing by 2 to the n. Okay, oops, 2 power n. Let me say 2 to the n. Okay. So you should also look at uh, to proving this. So in other words, in this case, when we, uh, let's say we had, not in this case, but let's say we had example, okay, here's an example. 
if I have uh, 0, 0, 1, 0, and I shift it by 0, by left by 1 bit, uh, shift left by 1 bit, and notice I shift in zeros, okay, so that's implied here, because you're shifting in zeros, shift left by 1 bit, uh, implies multiply by 2, that's exactly what happened, okay. So, by the way, that this terminology I used, just shifting left, means you're shifting in zeros, it's implied. But anyway, let's save this file, uh, instantiate it as a component, and then we're done. So let's see, one hertz counter, what do we call this file as basic shift register? I think they use, I think they use underscores, let's take a look. So let's make this a component. Component basic shift register is end component. Then let's make it a, since we have generics, let's make it a four bit. Oh, let's make it an eight bit shift register. shift register is basic shift register port map oh oops generic map okay so number of stages is going to be let's make it eight okay semicolon and do a port map So in this case, for simplicity, so you can experiment with this, I'm going to use key one as my clock. Okay, enable is going to be SW0, okay? So key zero is reset, and perhaps you should include a reset in the shift register design, okay? So all your registers are initialized to zero, uh, that'll be a good exercise for you. Let me just put let's make this. Let's make the data in as one. So the idea is you either set uh, switch one to so shift in zero or one. You set switch one either low or high, and then press key one. And then as do SR out, let's make it go to LED G one. Okay. So what you should see is and then it's been this file has been added to the project. So let me synthesize this. So what you should see when you simulate this, or let's say you download it to the D1 board. So after you press eight, uh, after you press key one eight times, LED G1 will have will either light will either turn on or off depending on what value was shifted into the most significant bit. That's it. Okay. So that's about it for, we're almost out of time. So if you go back to the syllabus, where are we at? Okay, we are basically done with all the sequential logic components. Okay, In the sense, uh, if you go into the syllabus, right here, so let's see if I got any errors. Flow was not successful, let's debug this. Um, but let me just uh, wrap up what I was talking about. We'll debug it, and then that'll be the end of the lecture. So basically, the
that's about it for the sequential logic components which is encounters so we have the test coming up we'll talk about timing analysis in the next lecture it's um, not that bad yeah, it's not difficult but bottom line is we're done with the sequential logic components we have the test and then we're just going to get into design 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 yeah. so please be sure you're comfortable with uh, let me close this with uh, sequential logic components quarters VHC, etc so let's see Mm, what's the error? So let's see, number of stages is eight. Uh, 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 what's that? And then you have the port map. Basic shift register generic map. This should be correct. Let me see. Commercial uh, 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 semicolon SRL, number of stages is eight. see what 8-bit shift register basic shift register is generic so port map okay so let me look at the template see if I can if I made something really stupid so let's see full designs constructs design units entity this is generic blah blah yeah there is no should be no semicolon at the end it's not okay stages is eight okay uh, library entity full designs homes and moms okay let me pause this because we're running out of time figure out what the bug is and then finish up the record okay continuing the error I had and I looked up in our book the syntax for generic map is I had a semicolon at the end of the generic map which caused the error there should be no semicolon there but anyway it's been uh, the synthesis has is successful okay so let's look at what we got we should see a block at the top level so here it is the shift register block so if you go in here and you can see you have an 8-bit shift register 8d flip-flops with feedback that's about it for this lecture so see you next time